Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to introduce Michel Zeha. It's a pediatric neurosurgeon. It's a world reference in spinal dysrophism and spinal disease. It's a great friend. Uh, Michel was a uh, head in the care of Malad. The, the Necker is a hospital in Paris, and uh, everyone knows Necker is a, a big hospital in reference in the pediatric case. And Michel was uh, president of the European Society of Pediatric Neurosurgery and uh, also president of the French Society of Pediatric Neurosurgery. And he's, Michel is a great friend of our society, Brazilian society, and they stay in Brazil several times. And thank you, Michel, for accepting this invitation. Thank you. Thank you, Ricardo. Thank you, all of you. Uh, <clears throat> it's a, a special moment for me because, as you know, as a pediatric neurosurgeon, in most of the cases, uh, we are speaking in, from, in front of uh, 20, 50, 100 people. And uh, here I can see that we cross 400, which is, for me, just uh, probably uh, 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 the, the most people I speak in front of. Uh, I want to thank uh, all the all of you, the Brazilian society, all uh, my friends and colleagues in, uh, in South America, and all of you that I do not know. I was told that there, there is 85 countries around the world which are uh, with us today. So, uh, I'm very glad of that, uh, and uh, hello to everybody, even if I can't see all of you and I can't uh, tell that to you. So uh, I will um, <coughs> share my uh, screen uh, now. Uh, is it okay? Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, okay. Okay, so I welcome you in uh, in Paris. It's uh, now 11 o'clock in Paris. So it's uh, the, the beginning of uh, the night. I know that it, it is a afternoon for many of you, but uh, all the hours around the world I uh, hear. And, uh, but in Paris, it's uh, 11 o'clock now. And uh, my talk is about spinal uh, dysraphism, and I must associate two of my uh, mate neurosurgeon, Timothée de Sanny and Federico Di Rocco, that you will listen tomorrow. And uh, of course, for my topic today, Jean-Marie Joannic, which is head of one of the departments of obstetrics uh, in uh, Paris, and Catherine Garel, which is the best uh, antenatal radiologist that uh, uh, we have in France, and uh, I thought about spinal dysraphism, and after discuss with uh, <coughs> uh, some of you, uh, I decide to speak about what happened uh, before birth, because uh, what has changed for us pediatric neurosurgeon is that we have to deal with uh, not only young children, but now uh, fetus, and for me, for example, for me, 20% of my time uh, is dedicated to uh, antenatal concealing and uh, antenatal uh, surgery, uh, which is a huge difference to my practice uh, at, even uh, 10 years ago. And uh, before starting, I just uh, want to uh, celebrate my friend, uh, Jim Goodrich, uh, that you know died from uh, COVID in uh, in New York two months ago now, which was who was one of my really my best friend and we share uh, all the courses of pediatric neurosurgery for 30 years uh, now all around the world and specifically in Brazil, uh, where we were as uh, Ricardo told you uh, several times. So. Uh, as I told you, uh, considering antenatal lesion, uh, we have now a role. Uh, we have a, a very specific role, and we need to know uh, that if we need to, be, if we are a spectator, 
a moral support or an, an actor. And in fact, uh, we are a super expert and we have to deal with very specific problem, as you know, of course, hydrocephaly and uh, CSF circulation problem, but also spinal and sp spinal cord lesion, cyst, craniosynostosis, and I think that uh, Federico will speak about that tomorrow, uh, vascular lesion, brain tumors, and uh, brain uh, malformation. It's always a secondary uh, clinic. And one thing which is very important is that we must keep in mind that in many, and in fact, in most of the cases, uh, our colleagues have absolutely no idea of uh, the pre or uh, postnatal uh, disease. And considering the parents, uh, they know that something is wrong, they are scared, and uh, they consider us as the last hope or uh, the messenger of uh, bad news. That's why uh, a prenatal clinic is always an emergency. And uh, we must keep in mind that this is the first contact with the parents for, in some cases, uh, 10, 15, or uh, 20 uh, years. And, uh, we, we need also to think about uh, the le their level of anxiety and our uh, ethical problem. What is very also what very different for many other things, for example, for brain tumors or for trauma or some or many things like that, is that our practice depends on the regulation and the law in uh, our country. For example, in France, and I know that uh, this is completely different. Uh, that than in many or the majority of the country in the world, we do ultrasound at 10 weeks, five months and eight months. Uh, we, can, we have access to MRI uh, since uh, 30 years now. Uh, we have recognized reference specialists in antenatal disease and for example, uh, in the neurosurgery. <coughs> what, she, what is very specific in front is that we have access to abortion for medical reason until the last uh, day of uh, pregnancy, but all the decision must be taken in a weekly uh, multidisciplinary meeting. And there is 44 uh, multidisciplinary um, centers uh, in uh, all France, but also our practice depends on the regulation and the law uh, in uh, our country and depends also on philosophical, religious, or ethical uh, consideration, which means that our practice on this antenatal disease depends on uh, ubiquitous consideration, but also uh, on circumstantial or uh, local consideration. And we always need to keep in mind to act in the best interest, but also to discuss the best interest of whom, of the fetus, of the parents, of the society, or uh, are we uh, behaving to protect uh, ourselves? And you know this uh, triangle between what I must, what I want, and what I can do. Uh, what I want, uh, do, need, do I need to consider my personal uh, con conviction? Is a fetus a person? Is the handicap acceptable? What are the moral rules uh, given by my culture or my uh, religion? Do I want to be appreciated? Do I want to be just and equitable? Do I want uh, to be a good doctor? And in front of that, I have very few uh, possibility. Uh, I can propose the termination of the pregnancy to welcome a child with a higher with a handicap and here a very severe handicap, or can I propose a prenatal uh, surgery? And we must also keep in mind that the first proclaim, uh, whatever it is, will stay forever in the memory of the parents. And uh, there is some terrible sentences, and we will see that at the end of my talk. It will be a vegetable, you would better terminate the pregnancy, you are young and we will make another one. And uh, the traumatism is not done uh, but by a peaceful word, but by negative sentences 
uh, without uh, any appeal. And uh, this is a quote of uh, the president of our French National Ethics Committee. Uh, what is called the free and informed consent is before all recognized and given the right to be allowed to say no. The consent come after it is to say yes after the clear possibility uh, to say no. And this is one of the most important thing is uh, to have a clear and informed consent uh, from uh, the parents. And uh, it's not a consent to what I think to be the best solution, but the consent of uh, them, of their ethical uh, choice, and the parents must absolutely have the power to say no and totally to say yes, uh, whatever is uh, proposed. That means that the information uh, must be not exhaustive, not catastrophic, not optimistic, not uh, general, but pertinent, uh, adapted to them, adapted to the future handicap, adapted to the possibility of understanding of the family and their uh, social, social cultural environment. And uh, this information must be given by a specialist who is able to take in charge the whole disease of the future child. And this is very important because there is a trend uh, of the antenatal surgery for myelomeningocele cell to be done by a non uh, neurosurgeon. And I think this is a huge mistake. And uh, we, need, we must fight uh, against uh, that. You know that uh, the CNF malformation are for far the most frequent uh, in uh, the fetus uh, population. And if you look to uh, what we have to deal uh, in our antenatal uh, clinic, uh, you see that uh, the ventriculomegaly was the most frequent, but uh, now the neural tube defect and especially the spinal neural tube defect are the most frequent. And last year, uh, we have seen about 100 cases of uh, neural tube defect in our uh, antenatal uh, clinic. And uh, what are we speaking about? We are speaking about open dystrophism, which is myelomenangal cell or uh, spina bifida, but also occult uh, dystrophism, <coughs> less frequent uh, as uh, lipoma, diastematomeyala, and so on and so on. But uh, I will spend uh, some time on uh, LDM, on limited dorsal myeloschisis, and what we have called uh, the MyLDM, because uh, these are uh, the uh, new uh, actors uh, in the field of uh, spinal uh, dysraphism. So uh, everything in prenatal uh, start by the embryology. So what have we learned by uh, the embryology? We have learned that uh, we must never trust uh, the embryologist because uh, what has been written came from animal model, short and often old series, artifact, until the era of the genetic and the molecular uh, biology with the chimera uh, quail uh, chicken, uh, then the genetic and uh, the molecular uh, biology and what is very important is that we know that uh, specifically for the uh, central nervous system, uh, we have some uh, genes who are preserved from uh, along all the evolution from the insect uh, to uh, the mammal and specifically the uh, homeobox uh, gene. But this is not uh, so simple. Uh, we have animal model, we have the, the zebrafish, but it's difficult to extrapolate from the zebrafish uh, to human, even if some uh, genes at the, at the uh, Van Gogh uh, two uh, genes uh, can provoke open and closed uh, malformation. We know that we are able in chicken embryo to do uh, diastematomyela or to induce uh, plurimal formation, for example, with adriamycin, we can provoke a foregut malformation associated with a low spinal cord malformation, exactly identical to the uh, Curarino disease. But if we go back to the uh, embryology, 
many of you know uh, this uh, small movie because I've shown it several times, but uh, what you know is that, uh, that most uh, of uh, the actors are here from the 15 days uh, uh, until the end of the first month uh, of life with the uh, rostrocodal uh, organization, the implantation of the primitive uh, node, uh, the organization of the central nervous system on the superficial part of uh, the uh, embryo with uh, the uh, neural, neural placot, the neural groove, and then uh, the neural uh, tube would start to close at D, uh, day 21, 22, and will progress uh, forward and uh, back, backward to the cranial and caudal neuropore, which are closed uh, before the 28 uh, days. So it seems very simple, and uh, we uh, teach uh, that to all uh, our uh, trainees. But as you know, it's uh, completely uh, false and it can't explain some uh, malformation as uh, this one coming from a paper of uh, uh, Roberto. <clears throat> and uh, until uh, this classical explanation, there have been many papers, uh, many from COP, for example, with the primary neuropod, the posterior neuropod, and so on. <clears throat> and more and more. Uh, explanation, but whatever, there is no uh, real uh, acceptable explanation. So for us, for neurosurgeon, we keep in mind uh, this uh, scheme with three time in the organization of uh, the spinal cord of uh, the uh, embryo, the guest relation, from the trilaminar uh, disc with uh, the risk of spinal cord anomalies and neuroenteritis. The neural tube closure divides in two times the primary neural relation and the disjunction. And uh, after the first month and uh, during the, the second month, the secondary neural relation uh, and the, the very terminal part of the spinal cord with uh, lipoma, myelocystocell, second phylum, and caudal regression. But <coughs> what we will consider today is uh, mostly the neural tube uh, closure with the primary neurulation, which will lead to uh, open tube, uh, open uh, malformation, the myelomenagocell, and abnormalities of the disjunction with incom incomplete or premature uh, disjunction. And we will consider mainly, and at the beginning, the primary relation with the uh, yellow menangocell. So wh what we know, <clears throat> we will start but uh, what is uh, obvious and known by everybody. Yellow menangocell is a failure of the relation. It's an open dysraphism. It's of course folate dependent. It implies the whole central nervous system which means the spinal cord and uh, the brain. So if we look back to the embryology, what we can say? We can say that the dystrophic states are best understood from an uh, embryological perspective. It can be associated with neurological dysfunction through a variety of mechanisms. <coughs> the scheme presented seems to provide a unifying classification uh, of these uh, disorders, but it is probably uh, wrong, but uh, in fact, uh, it doesn't matter because probably it is useless for our uh, daily uh, practice. So <clears throat> let's go back to antenatal neuromenagocell. We all know what it is. It's an open malformation, which means that the, the spinal cord go down to the skin, the skin is open, the spinal cord is not uh, closed, there is often a, a, a menagro cell with it, which means that there is absolutely no uh, posterior, <coughs> excuse me, 
there is no posterior uh, cover, which here are two types, the myelomeningocell and uh, the uh, rachniskisis. Uh, this one with the meningocell, this one uh, without, and we will have a discussion on that uh, at the, the third part of my talk. This is an antenatal uh, image, and you see that it really looks like to the uh, postnatal malformation. And this is an antenatal ultrasound and in the same child, in the same fetus, the abortion, and you can recognize how it looks. Uh, it, here, I, it was at the 18 uh, weeks. Uh, so what can, how can we make an, the diagnosis of this malformation and what we, can we say on the diagnosis of this malformation? Uh, of course, there have been many papers in the last year uh, to prove that the diagnosis has been done at the first uh, trimester. This is two of them. This is another one uh, be, and, uh, looking at uh, the level of the nuchal uh, translucency. You can guess uh, that there is a myelomeningocell. And here you have uh, some uh, images at uh, 11 weeks and at uh, 16 weeks. <coughs> but uh, in most of the cases, and uh, I would say uh, that the diagnosis at the first trimester remains exceptional. In most of the cases, the diagnosis is done uh, between the, se the second trimester. First of all, by indirect cranial and uh, cerebral findings, you know uh, all of them, the specific aspect of uh, the uh, ventricle, the flattening of uh, the frontal bone, and uh, one of the cardinal signs, the uh, aspect of the cerebellum. Uh, you know, uh, all of you, you know this specific uh, aspect which is in fact the uh, descent of uh, the uh, tonsil and most of the uh, brainstem and the cerebellum within the spinal canal, which is the carry two malformation associated with the myelomenagocell. And when you see that, uh, you go down and you can see the malformation. Again, you can see here um, on the MR uh, here and on the ultrasound here, the carry uh, malformation. <coughs> what are the signs of the uh, aspect of the meningocell? You have a widening of the spina bifida, which means the non-closure of uh, the spinal cord. You can see the spinal cord going within the sac to the skin, sorry, within the skin to the skin with uh, the uh, opening uh, skin. On a frontal view, you can see uh, the sac, the spinal cord, all the roots going down to the spinal canal. And here, if you use a parasagittal view, uh, you will, and this is one of the important uh, slides, you will see all the roots going back, ascending uh, back to uh, the uh, spinal uh, canal. <coughs> and here, the diagnosis is more difficult. It's a myeloschisis. And you see there is no sac, but uh, you have still the spinal cord, which go to an open uh, spi spinal uh, and skin uh, defect. The main thing uh, to look uh, when you have a dysraphism is the level, level of the defect be because uh, it's a major information for the uh, antenatal, the prenatal consult. Uh, what you need to find out is uh, where is S1. There is two ways to count for S1. Uh, you can go down and go back, and in most of the cases, it's difficult to see S5, so you start at S4, S3, S2, S1, or <coughs> you are looking for uh, the change of slope, and uh, at the level of the change of slope between uh, the number, uh, the number 
spine and the sacral uh, spine is uh, S5, S1, and will, you will be able to find out uh, S5. Then uh, you will look for uh, foot uh, deformity and uh, amyotrophy, as you can see uh, here. And when you see that, in most of the cases, it's uh, L5 or S1. There is no deformity in the majority of cases, but amyotrophy when it's uh, above, and uh, no deformity and no amyotrophy when the bilirubinago cell is under. And of course, you will look for uh, abnormality within the brain, and it is probably the only interest of the MR. Looking from pseudonotular uh, heterotopia at the level of the ventricle, you can see them uh, on the ultrasound, but uh, more uh, clearly uh, on the MR here, and they are very frequent on uh, the uh, neuromemangocell. You will look for the abnormality of the corpus callosum, which, which is very frequent and uh, in the myelomenagostel and not a contraindication for a fetal surgery. And uh, if you look to our series that we have published a few weeks ago, you see that on uh, isolated myelomenagostel, uh, we have 100% of carry malformation. And again, I think that uh, there is no yellow melanoma cell uh, without um, carry malformation. That means that if there is no carry, uh, it's not a yellow melanoma cell. Uh, macrocephaly, ventriculomegaly, half uh, of the cases. Corpus callosum abnormality in 60% of the cases. Uh, periventricular uh, nodular heterotopias, we have seen 11% of the cases. There is a, a good uh, correlation between uh, MR and uh, ultrasound in all the cases, uh, and uh, with a proportion agreement of uh, 82%. Uh, and uh, what is important is to keep in mind that from the postnatal, uh, that, that from the antenatal uh, evaluation, we will have a postnatal prognosis on the gait, on the sphincter on the carry, on the hydrocephalus, and on the mental uh, delay, and specifically uh, on the uh, walk <coughs> with a limitation at uh, L2. It's impossible to uh, stand with the malformation upward to L2, and the possibility of working with just a small apparatus at the level of uh, L1 uh, or <coughs> L5 or uh, S1 which a very good correlation between antenatal uh, ultrasound or MRI and uh, what is the result uh, after uh, birth. And if you look, for example, in this paper, uh, you will see that if you look to what happened after birth and what was the prenatal uh, ultrasound or the prenatal MR, uh, if you look here, uh, the uh, mean difference between uh, postnatal uh, and antenatal is about one level, which means that uh, it's easy from if you look for it uh, at the first clinic and at the moment of the diagnosis to tell the parents what will be uh, the final result of, for uh, their uh, child. And in fact, the only other question is to know uh, if the malformation will be open or closed. So is it a yellow cell or is it another malformation? Uh, I have no, no time to present all the possible, to the possible cases, but it's easy now to do the, the antenatal diagnosis on all uh, the uh, spinal uh, malformation, mainly by uh, the ultrasound, <clears throat> but what is important to keep in mind is that for all field dysraphism, the prognosis is good. Uh, 70 to 90% of them are normal at birth. There is no emergency to uh, treat. The, the uh, treat, surgical treatment is doable. And uh, 80 to 90% of these uh, children will be normal when they reach algebraic except for caudal regression and uh, syndromic dysraphism. Uh, but 
but what but uh, i will uh, discuss on some of them uh, a little bit uh, later so Nyelomenangosel. Nyelomenangosel uh, is known uh, from uh, the ancient uh, time. These are two uh, statues for, from the uh, Museum of uh, Ancient Art in uh, Primary Art in, in Paris. And you can see that there is something on the back of these two statues, which really look back uh, Nyelomenangosel. And we know that Nyelomenangosel it's a very severe disease, but not only at all. And if you look to the death uh, rate, it's uh, less than 10% at uh, 20 years in uh, the, life, the last survey, European uh, survey among all the uh, countries in uh, Europe. <coughs> the word spina bifida came from Nicolas Stulp, uh, this uh, uh, Dutch uh, surgeon who, we, who was a friend of uh, Rembrandt, and he published in, uh, in the second edition of the uh, Observationes uh, Medicae uh, two observations of uh, Mielomenagostel that he called spina bifida because uh, the spine were uh, open. So Mielomenagostel, uh, you know that uh, we, have para uh, we have functional handicap with paraplegia and center incontinence, and mental handicap because of the carry, because the endocephalus and because uh, the brain uh, disorganization. And <clears throat> from many years and from century, the only thing we were able to do uh, was to do uh, neonatal uh, surgery. You all know that. But this uh, neonatal surgery was only done to avoid uh, supra handicap and change nothing in the uh, evolution of uh, the uh, myeloma cell. And we know that the, res the results depend on uh, the uh, level, but <coughs> they are mostly uh, bad. This is coming from two papers published the same year by Barth and uh, uh, Mathieu Vinchon. And we know that uh, there is school problem, uh, they leave not independently, uh, it's very difficult for them to have a, a permanent uh, job. They live single and a few of them uh, have uh, children. So how can we change that? How can we change that? We have three possibilities. To uh, prevent the myelomenagos cell by the prevention by folic acid, to do antenatal diagnosis and terminate the pregnancy and to do antenatal uh, surgery. Primary prevention by uh, folic acid. Uh, for that, we needed to think uh, different as uh, in the uh, humanity uh, development, we have had turn point as the beginning of uh, writing or the impression by Gutenberg or now uh, the internet of uh, things. The discovery of fight, or uh, you probably all know that what I've done, uh, Joseph Louis uh, Lambert, he discovered the uh, concrete we, which changed uh, our life. Or, uh, and there have been some solitary people as uh, Wegener. You know that Wegener discovered uh, the um, uh, migration of uh, continent. Uh, it seems so evident uh, now uh, that we know that it's just like a baby uh, puzzles, but uh, it belongs 40 years for him to uh, be recognized by uh, the, all the geographic society where he was uh, banned. Uh, and in medicine, uh, there is some turn point as they discover the blood circulation uh, uh, by uh, Harvey or uh, the um, uh, <coughs> possibility of uh, wash hands and the, by uh, Samuel Weiss. And you know now uh, how often we are washing our hands uh, to avoid the contamination by uh, germs and special, especially zero virus. And this man, this man uh, is Richard Smithson. Uh, who lived in uh, Leeds and uh, Liverpool. 
his uh, GP, and uh, during uh, 20 years, uh, he was uh, just a GP and a pediatrician, and he wrote uh, to the Lancet several letters for 20 years saying, uh, I think that there is something uh, with the uh, alimentation, with uh, the food currents, with the, with the vitamin in children that provoke malformation and specifically uh, myelomenagosal. And everybody uh, were laughing of him until, until one day where a uh, uh, huge uh, trial uh, was done, perfect, perfect, not as uh, with the COVID now, but perfect, prospective, randomized, double blind, multicentric, international, and so on and so on and so on, which proved that folic acid will prevent uh, myelomenagosal and with, will, will decrease of 72% uh, the frequency of myelomenagosal and the 70% we are using now is coming from uh, this uh, study. After that, there have been several uh, studies <coughs> uh, in the States, uh, in Hungary, the, the, one of the uh, biggest uh, one, all in the same direction and all uh, showing the protective role of uh, folic uh, acid. Then uh, you know that the antenatal uh, diagnosis is uh, easy, to, easy to do, we have uh, seen that. And in front of it, uh, there is of course the possibility of termination of pregnancy. But uh, as we are coming from all around the world uh, here, uh, we know that uh, the regulation and the law is completely different in all our country. Uh, with a gradient from north uh, to south to have the possibility to do termination of pregnancy uh, for uh, malformation. Uh, for example, if you look to uh, United States, Europe and France, where it's not forbidden, you can see the huge difference between termination of pregnancy uh, for uh, myelomenagostal. And for, for example, in my country, uh, now we have reached about 100% of uh, diagnosis and up to 90% of termination of pregnancy for uh, myelomenagosal. Uh, but if you look to what happened in uh, Europe, it has provoked a huge decrease of uh, the numbers of diag diagnosis of myelomenagosal and the number of births uh, for myelomenagosal. And uh, in all Europe now, the number of live birth prevalence of myelomenagosal is two for 10,000 uh, uh, births, which is uh, one which is really new compared to other places uh, of the world, but it's not exactly the same numbers uh, in all France. For example, uh, if you look to what happened in my country, the number of myelomenagosal increased, 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 increased. Uh, and the number of, because of the numbers of termination of pregnancy, uh, we reach also the same uh, two per uh, 10,000, uh, which means that in my hospital, with a population of 15 million uh, inhabitants and 220,000 births uh, a year, the number of myelomenagosal decreased to reach one uh, child, uh, about 18 years uh, ago. And now I will discuss antenatal surgery. Antenatal surgery, uh, we all uh, uh, are okay to propose antenatal surgery. Is It's a severe disease, which an antenatal evolution, a failure of postnatal treatments, that we have rational for prenatal surgery and experimental evidence of uh, efficacy. Uh, first of all, we know that there is clearly, and this is a very important point, an antenatal evolution of uh, myelomenangocell with a two heat uh, worsening, the malformation and the deterioration of the malformation be, be, uh, during the pregnancy with uh, the um, 
uh, damage at the level of the spine and uh, the spinal roots because of the microtraumatism with the uterus and the toxicity of the amniotic uh, fluid. And uh, because of that, uh, it will provoke uh, deterioration of uh, the motricity and the sphincter. And uh, because of the leak uh, of uh, the CSF, you will have the impossibility for the cerebellum to take place within the, the, the cranium. So the Chiari malformation, then uh, we, you will have an obstruction and a secondary hydrocephalus. And this will need, to, this will uh, go to uh, Chiari, hydrocephaly and uh, brain uh, malformation. But not only, uh, you have also probably some toxic uh, point. Uh, you have uh, this uh, paper <coughs> which has proved that uh, there is uh, inflammatory meningitis because of contamination by the vernix uh, within uh, the uh, spinal canal. And this very interesting paper from our uh, Polish colleague uh, published uh, this year, which who looks to the inflammatory changes uh, in the dura mater and the skin, comparing prenatal and postnatal uh, surgery. And if you look to the lymphocytic infiltration and the granulocytic infiltration in the skin and in the dura mater, you, you will see that there is a huge uh, significant difference uh, between uh, <coughs> antenatal and postnatal, uh, group B, group two is uh, postnatal, <coughs> group one is uh, antenatal, early and uh, 22, 23 weeks and 24, 25 weeks surgery. And you see the huge difference uh, between and at the level of the dura mater and at the level of uh, the skin of uh, inflammatory uh, reaction. And this is probably one uh, of the effect of uh, the uh, early closure. And probably uh, this will be at uh, this level that the addition of uh, stem cells, and uh, we are working on that, which will be a uh, help. And uh, this will be my two last slide, a uh, help uh, to diminish this um, deterioration of the spinal cord. So is there a rationale for antenatal surgery? Uh, you all know that, that uh, on the Chiari, on the hydrocephalus, maybe on the gate, not absolutely not on the sphincter, but uh, the pre to paid is the prematurity and the risk for the mother. Uh, there have been a, a lot of discussion, a lot of controversy, <clears throat> very few uh, series until the moms the management of Guillaume cell study, which is published uh, nine years ago uh, now in the New England Journal of Medicine. And you all know uh, the general uh, results. Uh, you know that the study was stopped uh, by, by the DSMB uh, because of the uh, difference between uh, the two arms of the trial, and mainly because of the difference at the level of the hydrocephalus the disappearance of uh, the, the regression of the carry, the improvement of the gait. And as we know, uh, the tuped was increasing of prematurity and the discussion on uh, the maternal morbidity. And for us in France, uh, look what happened. Uh, we have a regrowth and uh, we have now a plateau of uh, 30 cases a year in my department uh, of uh, myelomenangocell only in relation with modification of uh, the uh, religious uh, behavior of our population. And this is true for many malformations and less people want to go for termination of the pregnancy. That's why 10 years ago, we decided to uh, work on uh, myeloma and cell. So we start from the beginning, we create an uh, animal uh, model, this is uh, a sheep. <clears throat> Most of the animal model are on sheep, but there is not 
um, natural one, so you need to create uh, it. So uh, we work uh, a lot uh, on that. And we operate about 100 uh, sheep to create an animal model and to work on uh, the uh, closure uh, of uh, it. <coughs> and this is the animal uh, with the neuromenagal cell and the carry malformation. And uh, after the surgery, uh, the closure of uh, the skin and the, the disappearance of the carry. That's why we were authorized by uh, our authority to do uh, a trial uh, in uh, probes. And our first one was a comparison of 10 in in surgery to 40 post uh, natal uh, one. Uh, you recognize uh, Federico Di Rocco here, and this is your Marie Joannick, my obstetrician uh, colleague. I will be very short on that. Uh, we have decided to do open surgery, and this is a point of uh, discussion. You can see the uh, myelomenago cell uh, here. And uh, probably one of the points of discussion is how to close. And I continue to believe that as far as we can, we must try to close it in three layers or at least uh, two layers uh, during this uh, surgery. The role of the anesthesiologist before, during, and after the, the surgery is uh, very, very important. We need to have an obsessional repair of uh, the uh, uterus, then you refill the uh, amniotic uh, fluid. This is a closure. And uh, as everybody, you can see the, the closure, the spinal cord back uh, in the canal, and the disappearance of the carry in all our cases uh, in less uh, than uh, 10 uh, days. And uh, this is the result, the morphological result after birth. And of course, there is a huge discussion now uh, on uh, the advantage and the disadvantage of fetoscopic uh, closure. And this is not uh, completely solved uh, now, and I will say a few words in, the, in, the, in a minute. And if you look, for example, to our first uh, 10 uh, cases, we have had no child mortality, no mother morbidity, a birth, median birth at 34 weeks as all, almost all the series in the world, and no unneeded ICU or intubation after birth. As I told you, all the carry uh, has uh, disappeared, only two shunt and two late uh, shunted. Uh, the motor level uh, wa was under the anatomy nuchal one of uh, two level and no deficit uh, above uh, LL5 uh, instead of uh, all the lesion you see uh, here. Of course, <laughs> it's easy to show uh, some good results. Here, it's an uh, L3 uh, yellow cell, and you can see the result. But to be honest, in most of the cases, uh, you have a small uh, improvement at the level of the motricity, no carry. And uh, I would say that uh, this is the only thing you can say uh, in most of the series uh, in uh, the uh, literature. And what happened after months? Uh, we need to consolidate uh, the results. Uh, if you look to the result in Philadelphia, uh, less than 20% of uh, the people refer to them to uh, uh, the uh, Philadelphia were operate of their myelomenal cell. Uh, some other series have been published. Some are good. Some are not. Uh, so good. You see here the number of uh, rupture of the membrane. Some, and even in the, in the recent one, are, uh, I would say, really bad. You know, late uh, surgery, 20 to 28 weeks, it's uh, really too late. Too late. Uh, early uh, delivery. Uh, hydrocephalus in three, uh, uh, in five children operated on three uh, newborn with hydrocephalus. <coughs> and uh, one less. <coughs> so the results uh, remain very uh, variant uh, among all the series in the literature. 
And one of the huge discussion is the maternal uh, risk and the maternal uh, outcome, as, as you will see uh, in, the, in a second. If you look to uh, the bladder uh, results, uh, to be honest, and in all the series, the results are bad. That means that in terms of catheterization of um, sphincter problem, uh, the surgery do not uh, solve the problem of yellow meningocyte. cell. The other point of discussion is how to improve uh, surgery. There is a lot of technical uh, consideration. You can see, do I need to um, uh, close uh, with su such stitches? Do I need to do a small incision? Do I need to put a patch, an artificial patch, a natural patch, overlay, inlay, and uh, so on? I will not stay, uh, keep time on that. Of course, uh, there is the uh, fetoscopic uh, surgery. And uh, some results, as I told you, are uh, very bad. And if you look to the first result from uh, Thomas uh, Cole, you can see that uh, the result was uh, good with infection and death. But uh, now the technique is um, solid and uh, specifically in, uh, in South America and specifically in Brazil. There is there is several teams uh, which has which have a good result in open but also uh, in uh, endoscopic uh, surgery. And the discussion now is to know how to do this uh, endoscopic surgery. And the discussion is one layer, two layers, three layers. And do I do do I do it percutaneously? Do I do it uh, at, at uh, open? Uh, uh, surgery and do I need to use three, two, or four <coughs> trocar? What is important is the long term uh, result. Uh, this long term result has been published uh, by the MOMS uh, team, and now we have results uh, up to uh, 10 uh, years. And what can be said? Uh, first thing, uh, if you look to uh, the results uh, in terms of uh, walking status uh, or uh, chance, the results remains very, very, very uh, good and very uh, significant. If you look to uh, functional uh, outcome, it's much more difficult uh, to have an idea. Some results are good, some known. If you look to the Vinland, uh, the result is absolutely non significant. If you look to Google, to, if you look to the composite score on the CMS, uh, there, this is not the same thing. And uh, if you look to, if you want to look to an overall uh, outcome, it seems to be good uh, on uh, the uh, quality of life or on the total impact, it remains significant. Uh, and if you look to the conclusion of uh, this paper, uh, it's, uh, perfect illustration to, to what I have said. Uh, there is two conclusions, the conclusion of the abstract and the conclusion of the paper. And uh, if you look to on them, you see this finding on the most rigorously studied group of children with below cell at the growing body of the literature demonstrate the benefit of prenatal surgery. And uh, uh, within the, the article, there was no significant difference between surgery group in overall adaptive behavior and so on and so on. So it's, we have not the uh, exact uh, results. Of course, uh, it treats the um, Chiari, but <clears throat> in fact, who care uh, with Chiari in, uh, in the uh, myeloma cell? There is, as I told you, the remaining problem uh, with uh, the, the mother. And this is one of the huge problem in this kind of uh, surgery and the risk of uh, uterine rupture and the risk of uh, fetal uh, death. And this is a, a real strong argument for uh, endoscopic uh, surgery. And if you look to this uh, review of the literature, uh, you see that the uh, average uh, overall weight of maternal and obstetric complication remains 80% uh, when you look 
uh, in all the paper and the main risk is the chorionic membrane uh, uh, separation. Uh, <coughs> that's why if you consider the neurosurgeon opinion on prenatal management of yellow benagosal, and it was a survey done all uh, around uh, the world, the most important objection uh, to providing um, uh, fatal neurosurgery are fatal complications, uh, too few cases available to become proficient, maternal complications, and the most important reason to provide open fatal surgery are decreased range of carry, decreased shunt uh, dependency, but not uh, the uh, other one. So where are we in 2020? It seems uh, that we have a consensus on decreased risk of uh, hydrocephalus, and there is papers which prove that uh, th there is a significant difference between a prenatal and a postnatal uh, group of, uh, in, in, in terms of uh, dependency and um, re resurgery for uh, shunts, and the recommendation of the Congress of Neurological Surgeons. Uh, society is, uh, is there a different proportion patient who develop shunt dependency, shunt dependent hydrocephalus? And of course, the reason, the answer is yes, with uh, level uh, one evidence. <coughs> but, but uh, what has been published recently? In this paper of uh, Tulipan, uh, who was one of the surgeon of uh, the mom study, uh, he said that uh, there is a difference between um, the small ventricle at the moment of the surgery and large ventricle at the moment of the surgery. And in terms of hydrocephalus, when you have a ventricular size over 15, there is no difference between the prenatal and the postnatal uh, group in terms uh, of shunt. So uh, he said that there is no uh, evidence to improve outcome in uh, these two group. <coughs> on this paper from ATSIC, was the, the other surgeon uh, on the mom's uh, study. Uh, he looks for uh, the same thing. He, he uh, find a difference between the fetal and the postnatal uh, group. He find out uh, the same difference uh, the same non difference over 15 uh, millimeters uh, at the atrial uh, distance. But his conclusion uh, is uh, that, sorry, uh, his conclusion is that uh, that should not be used as an R's cutoff uh, for offering uh, fetal uh, surgery, which means that uh, there is still a discussion on the surgery when you have a ventricular dilatation over uh, 15. Uh, what kind of treatments uh, you will need to use for hydrocephalus uh, after birth? Here also, uh, there is a huge uh, discussion. Uh, I will be short on that uh, when you consider uh, shunts uh, versus um, ETV, but uh, in more and more uh, team now, uh, I will be short on that. People propose uh, to do uh, endoscopy uh, and specifically on uh, this paper, uh, even for myeloma endocell, and even uh, if uh, we know that uh, myeloma endocell is a difficult case to do uh, ventriculostomy because of the anatomy of the ventricle and specifically the huge ma uh, massa uh, intermedia. Uh, we uh, all know that the so prominent massa uh, intermedia, but uh, it's not completely impossible to do it. And for example, in this paper from my colleague in, in uh, Lyon, they have 60% of success of uh, ETV even uh, in uh, yellow melanoma. So, uh, 
to to finish the, this the this part, uh, it's of course very important to do the uh, antenatal counseling, knowing all uh, we have uh, seen, and you know the difference between the initial preference and the informed preference on, on the patient. And the, the most frequent misconception about fetal surgery is with that fetal surgery, my child has no chance to walk. And we know that ability to walk depends on the level of the lesion. We have seen that. Fetal surgery is a cure for spina bifida. It's not a cure. Uh, this is a chronic and lifelong condition. And fetal surgery is a new standard of care. You can't say that, we can't say that. Postnatal repair is still the standard and fetal surgery is a, a new uh, treatment uh, option. And you remember uh, the discussion between what I must, what I want and uh, what uh, I can. <coughs> and um, looking for the difference between open and endoscopic uh, closure. Uh, there have been this year, probably, uh, at the end of last year, a meta-analysis comparing 17 uh, series and looking for the learning curve uh, among these series. One of the main problem is that uh, you need to have a high number of cases to achieve uh, this learning curve and reaching a standard of uh, surgery. Uh, we know that uh, it's between 31 and 60 cases in standard opening. In mini hysterotomy, it has been calculated to 70, 57 cases and no, uh, no, no series achieved more than 45 cases. In fectoscopy with exteriorized uh, iterus and single layers, uh, nobody. In three fetoscopy with percutaneous uh, single layers, nobody knows, but uh, it's not achieved after 81 cases in uh, the, the series studied in this paper. And with one with spectroscopy percutaneous double layer, uh, it, it has been calculated at 50 at 56 and not reached after 47 cases. And it is a huge problem because you need to have a, a con, con, uh, uh, important number of patients to reach uh, the uh, level uh, of um, uh, excellence to do this uh, surgery. So I will not do that. And I will finish uh, with uh, my series. I need 10, 10 more minutes to finish with our series. In Necker uh, and Trousseau, in our hospital in Paris, we have had 133 cases referred for uh, antenatal surgery. First information. 20% uh, of them are misdiagnosed. Even if they go to the reference uh, specialist I told you and the reference center I uh, told you. Uh, 10 were not eligible from, uh, for prenatal uh, repair. <coughs> and uh, we had only 93 true uh, myelomenagosel. Among them, 55 of the parents uh, want to go for termination of uh, pregnancy. 18 want to do postnatal repair. And among these uh, 133 cases, only 16 ask for prenatal uh, repair. Uh, and if you to take in mind that compared to what we've seen uh, previously, at least in Europe and in our countries, uh, we we need very few centers uh, to keep uh, the uh, experience to do this surgery. But what I want to speak about is about this misdiagnosis because, and this is the most important lesson we have had uh, during uh, the last year, are this uh, misdiagnosis. Uh, this was a, a 35 year old uh, woman, obese, uh, and diagnosed with a myelomenangocele. Uh, who refused to go for termination of pregnancy. So uh, we see her and we find out that uh, there is not a huge uh, carry, that it doesn't look exactly uh, as uh, a myeloma you know, with a stalk, with a spinal cord looking backwards, 
and uh, going back uh, within the, the, the spinal canal and uh, a wide opening of the spinal canal. And uh, this couple has been proposed termination of pregnancy. And in fact, uh, this was an LDM that decided to continue the pregnancy. You see the aspect uh, at uh, birth. <clears throat> And the surgery was done uh, at uh, D12. And you know how easy uh, it is to do a surgery of uh, LDM. You just have to cut uh, the stalk to put back uh, the spinal cord uh, within uh, the uh, canal to find, uh, to find out a dura uh, around the lesion and uh, to do uh, the closure with a good result and the child is normal. Uh, you know that uh, these uh, LDM can occur anywhere in the spinal uh, cord. Uh, you see here the, the typical aspect of uh, LDM as here. And this is a benign lesion. This child has been operated and is completely uh, normal. He, he has 70 years uh, now. So uh, after these uh, several of these cases, we were very happy and we said that there is a perfect line between the myelomeningocell and the LDM. We need to be aware of that. We publish that. And uh, we said it's very, very important to make the difference between uh, the two and be careful not to propose termination of pregnancy in uh, these uh, cases. But of course, as usual, uh, there is a huge difference. <clears throat> and uh, some weeks after you see this case, normal skin, but you see the spinal cord going here and not going back uh, within uh, the canal. You see again the spinal cord uh, here. A small ventricular uh, dilatation, you see the spinal cord uh, here. Not really a chiari, but uh, the, the, the cerebellar is a little bit uh, low. And we decide to follow this pregnancy. The parents do not want to uh, interrupt the pregnancy. And you see the rupture of the sac at the 27th uh, week and the aspect uh, at birth, which is not exactly a myelomeningocell, but which is not uh, a closed uh, lesion. This is the aspect of the brain and the ventricle and the cerebellum at work. And the result is in between myelomeningocell and another malformation. Here, another case, you see this is clearly an open lesion, but if you look to what it is, you know the spinal cord is closed, but go uh, to the skin, uh, and you just have to cut that and to close, and it's also <coughs> uh, a simple surgery. Here, another lesion, uh, which is different but interesting. You see the spinal cord go here, make a U-turn, and goes to uh, the uh, skin without, uh, uh, without a placon. You can see it perfectly here. And uh, at birth, you see it, this malformation. Clearly an open lesion, but absolutely uh, no spinal cord, which is attached somewhere uh, here, as you have seen in the, in the prenatal images. And if you look to that, it's not so different uh, that what we have seen uh, with myelomenagosel, uh, the only with uh, LDM, the only difference is that this is the tip of the spinal cord, which was attached uh, to the, uh, the skin. <clears throat> the surgery was exactly uh, the same, and it was possible to uh, remove everything. You see that the skin is normal, the hole uh, is small. And uh, the child has been oper operated on, and he, he, it is completely normal, which means that the separation doesn't exist. And probably uh, there is a continuum between uh, all uh, these uh, malformations. And uh, again, you remember what we've seen uh, previously on uh, the uh, sac or uh, without sac. There are several papers now in the literature who uh, look to the traction and uh, uh, the stretch of the spinal cord antenatally, which is a cause of uh, deterioration, neurological deterioration. 
with a linear uh, deterioration. Uh, uh, and you see the, the volume of the sap and the probability of uh, TALIP, and this is highly, highly, highly uh, significant. Several papers uh, have been uh, published uh, showing uh, that. And when you look how many children walk independently in case of a sac over the lesion and not sac, there is a huge uh, difference uh, between uh, the two. And again, in, uh, this has been uh, also shown in an old paper of Scott Adzik. Probably there is a difference when you have a stretching of the spinal cord antenatally or uh, when uh, you haven't. And that's why <coughs> we proposed um, a few, few weeks ago to be careful on, on uh, what we are speaking uh, uh, on this antenatal uh, malformation. Of course, uh, we have yellow meningocell cell and there is a discussion and I, I really believe that they need to be uh, treated before uh, birth. But uh, we need to keep in mind that some fetus carry uh, uh, LDM with a complete favorable functional uh, prognosis that there is a continuum between this neuromenango cell and uh, this uh, LDM. And we propose to call all this in between malformation, uh, NIELDM, which are malformation between uh, LDM and neuromenango cell. <coughs> and uh, we must keep in mind that the, malform the, the deterioration must be in relation uh, between the leak, but also the degree of stretching of uh, the uh, spinal cord and uh, this huge va va variety of malformation can probably explain some surprising good results uh, which you can see uh, in the literature of um, children uh, running and peeing completely uh, normally. And to end, you see, you can have more complicated malformation. You see here a low spinal cord, a lipoma here, uh, some uh, uh, stalk. And if you look to the malformation at birth, this is the aspect uh, at birth. And if you look at the malformation, you have the stalk as in LDM, you have a low spinal cord, and you have a lipoma uh, which attacks the spinal cord at the low level. Uh, of uh, the malformation, which means that, uh, and this is uh, we reach the end of my talk, there is in fact, when you look to uh, neural tube closer, a complete continuum uh, between all the malformation uh, we have seen now. We have seen yellow meningo cell uh, here with wide neck, wide opening roots uh, within uh, the sac. We have seen limited uh, dorsal neuroschisis, LDM, with this typical aspect of the spinal cord, the stalk, the normal skin, uh, the roots which stay within the, within the, the canal. We, are, we have seen some lipoma, uh, terminal uh, lipoma with stalk, with uh, meningo cell, with again, uh, normal uh, skin. <coughs> We have seen uh, other type of NLDM with uh, the spinal cord going to the skin, but closed with no uh, placard and few roots uh, within the sac. We have seen another type of NLDM with uh, the spinal cord attached to the normal skin, but uh, an opening at uh, the level of the lesion. You can find out lipo, yellow, cystocell, uh, as you can see uh, here. And if I show all that, uh, it's just to say that uh, among them, some are uh, very severe and stay very severe. Some are in between and some are really benign. And we must be able to recognize among all of them. That means that uh, we must be very careful on the ultrasound and we must be very careful uh, to uh, what we are doing and we need to do a sur-mesure evaluation and we need to answer to this question. Is it an isolated malformation? Is it open? What is the level? 
is there an hydrocephalus? And this is a classical question. What is the size uh, of the sac? And this is some stretching effect. Is there cerebral anomalies? And of course, other anomalies to propose a surmesure uh, treatment. And keep in mind that uh, we have myelomenal cell. We know that we are uh, LVM and we have clearly some lesion uh, in uh, between. And that's why we have tried a new um, study specifically dedicated to uh, sacral meningocele cell and uh, MDL treated by uh, fetoscopy. And as I told you, uh, our cell therapy, uh, cell therapy uh, program to help uh, the um, healing of this uh, myelomenagos cell uh, one of my PhD is working in Boston now on uh, this uh, treatment. <coughs> and probably in two or three years uh, from now, we'll have uh, the uh, preliminary uh, results. The beginning was uh, the same, which is the model I uh, showed you. Uh, we put at the moment of the closure of the melanoma cell, a patch impregnated with the melanchimal uh, stem cells. And we will see what will be the difference uh, in the uh, treatment of uh, this patient. And I will end uh, from where I start with, with uh, Jim Goodrich, uh, because uh, I dedicate all my talk uh, to him. Uh, this was an epic uh, dinner in, uh, in Paris where we test uh, Armagnac uh, from uh, 1902 to 19. Uh, 78, <clears throat> and if I show you that, it's because at this dinner there were Christian Saint Rose and uh, Dominique Renier, and Federico Tiroco will talk after me tomorrow, and uh, I'm sure he will remember this uh, emotional uh, dinner. I thank you. Everybody asleep? No, 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 no. no Thank no. you, Misha. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you very, Merci very much. Hamilton, do, do, have, do have any comments, Hamilton? You have experience. Um cara. Vamos devagar, hein? Deixa as pessoas ligar primeiro, hein? Calma, hein? É... Dr. Hamilton, is, everybody is online? First of all, uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, amazing presentation. I'm a skull-based surgeon, you know, I don't know pediatrics. But uh, in the university and in, the, in our state also, every, uh, every year you receive some notification from the government, a family from a very poor city that had a patient, had a, had a, a, a child, with the diagnosis of meningocele, intrauterine, and now they want to go to another state, to a private, to a private clinic, Continuous. make a lot of money, pay a lot of money, and the government has to pay for this. I think the ethical issue in this intrauterine surgery is great a big point. If I had listening to your lecture before, maybe you could save a lot of money from our state, from the poor country. And thank you for the honest, thank you for the extremely, extremely high level of your presentation. I think Dr. Ricardo Oliveira will, you coordinate this. You have the finals here from around the country, around the Latin America. And in the top had more than 500 participants. Thank you, sir, for an amazing presentation will be the history of the Brazilian neurosurgeon, I'm sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ricardo, go, go ahead. Yeah, Michel, uh, I have, um, uh, just to, to begin in the discussion, I know that it's too late for in Paris, but I'm sure that people- No, no, as you know, <laughs> as you know, that's not a problem for me. Okay. <laughs> so did you show some uh, beautiful uh, image from ultrasound and prenatal? But uh, in your opinion, MRI, is it useful and uh, to decide 
for the multidisciplinary team to go far to the antenatal surgery. So what is your opinion? Uh, we, for, for routine myelomenangal cell and for parents who want to terminate the pregnancy, it's completely useless. <clears throat> Because with the ultrasound, and if you really want, you can do an amniocentesis and look for uh, acetylcholine esterase. It's very easy to have the diagnosis. The uh, only goal of the MR is to be sure that there is no contraindication to the antenatal surgery, which means that if you have a, a huge malformation of the brain, there is absolutely no reason uh, to go for antenatal right. surgery. Right. And it's the same thing if you have a chromosome, uh, chromosome abnormality. That, that's why we do systematically an amniocentesis before the antenatal surgery. But you look very well on the ultrasound, on the ultrasound we have now, except for some malformation of the brain. For the micropolygyry, for example, it's uh, easier on the MR than on the ultrasound. Uh, for the um, nodular heterotopia also, but absolutely not for the spinal malformation. Absolutely not. Okay. Uh, you see, we have some questions. Milton, do, do you have uh, any comments? Yeah. Are you listening? Yes. Yes, we are. Okay. Michel, really uh, a very, very, very good talk. Many, many information. But the one thing that I want to ask you is about uh, this new concept of myelomeningocele and LDM. Uh, if I understood you very well, uh, this uh, kind of uh, mixture of malformation is uh, confined only at the sacral of part of the, the, the spine, right? Or you can, can you find this. I can't, I can't say we can't find this because uh, we, we discovered all these lesions because uh, we had interest in, uh, in antenatal surgery. Previously of that, specifically in France, <coughs> as soon as an obstetrician saw anything uh, bulging in the back of a child, it said it's uh, spina bifida you need to terminate the pregnancy. And in 99% of the cases, there, were a term, there was a termination of the pregnancy in my country, uh, which means that uh, I have a, 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 a view uh, at less than 10 years. What I can say is that LDM, I've seen LDM at any level, from the cervical region yeah. to uh, the lower part of the back. No discussion. For myeloma and uh, and most of them are in the lumbar region, but you can see, see them at uh, the dorsal or exceptionally at the cervical region. And for the moment, uh, what we call uh, L, uh, LDM uh, has been only seen for us uh, at the uh, lumbar or sacral uh, region. But uh, I have not enough um, uh, follow-up to be sure of what I'm saying. But, you, know, the... you, you know, Michel, I'm, I'm telling uh, that it must be uh, restricted to the sacral or lower lumbar area because it's quite difficult to have a both lesion at, uh, for example, at the upper level of the lumbar region or thoracic region. Probably, maybe or probably, I don't know how to say. You are probably right, but I see that uh, we need to uh, see cases from uh, all of you uh, to be sure that uh, we, we are in the good direction. Okay, thank you. Arthur, please. Uh, Arthur, Hi. I think that. <clears throat> thank you very much, Michel. And Excellent talk. Uh, I have a uh, question for you. I have had some patients after, uh, after fetal myelomeningocele repair who developed the symptomatic tethering. 
do you observe any difference between prenatal and postnatal surgery with respect to secondary tethering? Uh, we have had no retethering in my series, but it is short. Uh, what is more in interesting is, is to look to uh, the huge uh, papers uh, published in the literature. We review all the series together. Uh, it seems to be clear um, on the mom series or on the aggregation of all the endoscopic series that there is really less a recess ring in antenatal than in postnatal surgery. I think, Nestle, Nancy, you agree with that? Yes, Michelle, we have this impression. Uh, we don't have a huge amount of these patients, but uh, with uh, the percutaneous technique, we doesn't uh, close, uh, the, or we don't uh, redo the, the spinal canal. We don't just put the patch and uh, close the skin uh, over that. What uh, is uh, bring to me to believe in this, maybe with time, 10 years or 15 years, we will be the answer, is uh, the, the histological cut comparing when you close uh, in animal, uh, maybe your next project will try to show us with uh, more experience, when we see uh, the microsurgery uh, cut and uh, only the patch in the animal model, the, the vision is absolutely different. The anatomy is much better preserved when uh, we have uh, this uh, technique. And uh, the patients until now, since I know, uh, we don't have retethering after fetoscopy, but the, the childs are young. I think it's too, too early to, to be sure about that. Maybe but Patricia can seen... talk about uh, the huge amount the patients you have with uh, open surgery. Maybe you can uh, do your opinion comparing uh, prenatal and postnatal to see if uh, the tethering is better for the open surgery comparing with uh, after birth surgery for these patients, uh, Patricia. Uh, your your voice, Patricia. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Nelsie. Patricia is open. Yes, Michelle. Uh, yes, Patricia. Yes, Michelle. Uh, uh, mon cher Michel. Uh, thank you for, for your uh, presentation. It's very, very interesting. A lot of information. And uh, you have a, a, a lot of, of experience and uh, critical things about the, the, the male meaningful cell. So in our series, I think that that is an impression that in beginning and in beginning of the, the, the program, we have, uh, uh, we have more of a inclusion cyst and the tetraed cord. But after with the development of the technique uh, uh, the number of uh, cases with tether cord and, uh, and the cysts of inclusion uh, uh, are lower uh, now. And, and Arthur, you see uh, the very interesting Polish paper on the inflammatory reaction at the level of the skin and the level of uh, the dura and the huge uh, difference between uh, the prenatal and postnatal surgery. And uh, it's probably also why you have less attachment tethering uh, in case of prenatal surgery compared to postnatal surgery. Do you believe that this complication is related with the uh, uh, surgeon experience? <clears throat> uh, you, you listen to Patricia, what Patricia has said, and this is what I believe that uh, if you want to do the surgery, you need to have a, a workload enough to have uh, enough experience. <clears throat> this is completely clear. Uh, but there is also the decision uh, on the technique you are using. 
and clearly uh, the, the discussion is not closed uh, between the open surgery and the endoscopic surgery. <clears throat> but it, it, it's clear that uh, what, what Patricia uh, told us with, with the huge experience of uh, Sergio compared to people who has done uh, two or three cases a year, uh, it's, there is a huge difference. Uh, and we have, as pediatric neurosurgeon, um, as the organization to dedicate some centers uh, around the world, around each country uh, to do the surgery. For example, in France, with 90% of termination of pregnancy, we have decided to have only one center. Uh, when you have the population in Brazil with the impossibility to do termination of pregnancy, you need more. Uh, and it, it depends really to uh, the country you are working in. Michel, just a question on this point. Yeah. Did you see some relationship with uh, uh, PUNG advice when you uh, operate lipoma? You need to give a huge space on the spinal canal to don't have again retethering after reoperation. Did you see some correlation with this statement with uh, try to avoid uh, retethering or fetal or postnatal myeloma negocio, or you don't see any correlation with them? I, I, don't, I don't think there is a correlation. Uh, I, I really believe that in prenatal, you need to do several layers. And as I said, I believe <clears throat> that to do two or three layers is better to do one. Uh, I believe that it's better not to put a patch. And I try to close the skin uh, by direct closure. Uh, but uh, I have no experimental evidence to answer to your question. So I don't know. Thank you. OK. <clears throat> Michelle, we have some questions about uh, the audience. So concerning, yes. in, in your opinion, what is the best age that you indicate antenatal treatment? The best uh, age of pregnancy. There is, a, the, it seems that the sooner is the better. This is the first answer. Uh, there is a consensus uh, among, I would say all of us, that uh, we need to do that before the 26 uh, weeks. And uh, in most of the protocol, <clears throat> the end point is the 26 uh, weeks. After that, some of us, and I'll show you one paper where the mid age was at the 28 uh, weeks. <clears throat> Probably the team who are doing endoscopy uh, have a mean age a little bit higher than uh, that, and I will speak rather for uh, open surgery. And if you look on the other side, uh, for, for example, uh, for the inflammation, uh, there are, you, you've seen that there is two groups, one A and one B. There is less inflammation if you do the surgery at the 22 weeks than uh, after. Uh, the youngest we have done was at the 21th uh, week. Uh, after that, probably uh, there will be technical problem. And the second problem is that, uh, that there is always the risk of um, prematurity, which means that uh, if you operate at the 26 weeks, uh, you need to wait for only six to seven weeks uh, to have uh, an acceptable prematurity. If you do the surgery as the 21 uh, weeks, it will be long uh, 12 weeks, which means three months, uh, which is a problem. And you need to have the balance between probably uh, a better results and probably a higher risk of uh, prematurity which means that the range for uh, most of us is between the 21 and the 26 uh, weeks. Okay, uh, we have some, uh, some panelists uh, from other countries, so Jaime Diego Perez from Mexico, 
Francisco Perdon from Argentina, Tenoch from also Mexico, uh, Adrian from Costa Rica, and I would like some comments uh, from in, in those countries. How is uh, the antenatal program now? Just to to check uh, some information. So, yes, in, in Mexico we have only one center. That, in, in my knowledge, that is making uh, prenatal surgery, and uh, is in Querétaro. And I think that is a matter of uh, obstetrics and anesthesiologists because. Uh, Anyone, uh, I think that uh, anyone can do this surgery as neurosurgeon, but, but uh, uh, obstetric team is quite different. They have the responsibility of the mother and the child, and maybe for open surgery, uh, each uh, of us can, can make the, the, the surgery, but it's different for the other teams and there's only one hospital uh, in Mexico that is doing that, that and no one is doing a uh, photoscopy. Adrian? Microphone. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, yes. now yes. Okay, so um, as you know, and this is something that we will talk about in a couple of weekends on the Clash of the Titans about folate fortification, you know, here it's a very big thing. And one of the important things that we're looking at is that the impact of this universal folate fortification program, it has lowered not only the number of myelomeningocele cases, but it has decreased the diameter of defects. And most of the defects that we see today are L3 and lower. And almost half of these kids will not require a shunt. So in our context, I think the most important ethical question is, have we achieved many of the so-called benefits of prenatal surgery just by fortifying with folate? Is this, you know, if, if, were we able to achieve this? Um, let me tell you with, you know, with true honesty, in, in our last cohort of the last 10 years, 10 years, having uh, around 32 cases per year, 31, 32, in a country where there is almost no abortion, there's no, so we know those are the real numbers of the cases. We, do n we simply have not seen Chiari at birth. We have seen it like in two patients in 10 years. Believe me, this is, so uh, the, the next question that we are planning now is, is it worth planning and investing in prenatal surgery if we have prevented it just by folate? Is it, is it optimal to attempt prenatal closure on these patients? So that's what we're looking at now. I think it's very interesting <laughs> of what happens here in, in, in Costa Rica, of course, and as I have said it in every single seminar elsewhere, we are a close country with a universal health system. Everybody, regardless whether they plan or not, get around 400 micrograms of folate per day. And because of this, the impact is universal. This is very hard to replicate in you know, large areas, such as in... Uh, um, you know, in uh, <clears throat> Brazil, in Argentina, where it's it's very big regions where um, people practice this. Uh, you know, they 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 gather their crops and they eat. You know, uh, mandioca or you know corn in Mexico or in other areas of, of Latin America. Uh, but we're carefully looking at these numbers and. Uh, we hope we can make a case for this, you know, for, to continue with universal fortification with folate. Adrian, I completely believe you and I thank you for your comment. My problem in France <clears throat> is that there is only 10% of fortification with folic acid. We have a huge problem in, in my country because 
the population and the obstetrician do not believe in folic acid and it's a nightmare to try to convince uh, the population. And second, uh, have you seen uh, the number of uh, couples that do not want termination of pregnancy increase? And that's why we decided 10 years ago to open a program. But my dream is, uh, is that 100% of the population achieved to have fortification and that uh, we no longer see this kind of problem. Yes, of course. And, and you know, there's also, and this will be dis <coughs> discussed in the clash, but as you know, there has been this question in whether if you fortificate with folate, whether the rate of colorectal and prostate cancer and some uh, tendency for uh, diabetes type two in children will increase. But I am also gathering these numbers to show you that this has not been the case here. So very particular, you know, uh, in, in, in several ways, we, we are a very uh, particular phenomenon, you know, as, as with COVID and elsewhere. But um, I think we need to push and show with real data that you can achieve very cheaply. You know, it takes just $5 to fortify one ton of flour, just $5. Imagine how much do we spend in one of these uh, prenatal programs? How much do we spend in a postnatal program for kids with myelomeningocele, the implications, the economical, family, family, social implications. So um, we hope to keep gathering all this data and uh, we're gonna come out very soon with, with a, the 20 year follow-up. Now I have follow-up, not only for performance, for you know school's performance, uh, daily life uh, measurements of quality of life and so on in order to try to make you know, a, a big case that will not only impact uh, neurosurgeons because you know, most of us believe in, in folate. The problem is, as you have said, Michelle, pediatricians, uh, health government officials, and so on, you know, the industry right. and so on. But Dr. Michelle, is uh, already a World Health Organization recommendation to do uh, the uh, supplementation why in France is not doing that? Because that's France. I, I can't have uh, I can't have an answer. <clears throat> uh, I was uh, fighting in thirty years with my uh, health uh, minister, with all the organization. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say day and night, uh, and uh, it, it's very, very, very complicated. Uh, and probably it's because. <clears throat> Uh, all the politicians mm -hmm. fear to propose anything to the population because to what we had uh, in the uh, ads, uh, where one minister, some minister were condemned mm -hmm. for uh, bad treatment. And I think that after the COVID, it will be much more complicated with the hydroxychloroquine and the huge discussion with to take and not to take. Uh, I think uh, we need 30 more years to achieve to do something. Maybe you need the Latin American data to support your petition over there. Oh, I, I will be very pleased. <laughs> uh, we have two, two people to, that I know, uh, Professor Salomão and Professor El Machado in the room, and both uh, were involved in the past with the program about uh, fortification. Uh, Salomon in the acephalic during the, his uh, period of the presence of the Brazilian society and Professor El Machado uh, was involved in, in the try to, to convince people that working in sugar, sugar cane fortification. So I'd like to, to listen and uh, to share uh, with the audience, their uh, opinion. Oh, thank you, Ricardo. <laughs> I, I was trying to contact you exactly to comment this situation. Uh, in opposition to what uh, Adrian said, our program of fortification with folic acid was not so successful. 
In the beginning, we thought that it was because uh, we added, we enriched the, the flowers with a small, smaller amount of acid folic. Later on, the, this amount was increased. And today it's near the standard when you reach flowers everywhere, no, everywhere I suppose. But not. For, I was curious about the incidence of my alumino sales in Brazil. And I went to 15 years ago to our national register for, of uh, spina, spina bifida. And we found that in the beginning, there was a, a very, very, very impressive and very optimistic result. But later on, the, the incidence of my alumin in Gossel started increasing again. And now I believe that is more or less what we have uh, before. We don't have any program, officially any program that was tried several times. Once when Nelsi was the president of the Brazilian Society for Pediatric Neurosurgery, when we tried to make acid folic in ingestion a politics, a health politic in Brazil. I'm not, I'm not aware that this was had been possible was my my remark about it i don't think that uh, folic acid fortification uh, had worked so much here in brazil just a comment salomão um, uh, there is a paper 2004 2014 comparing 10 10 years before and 10 years after fortification they decrease uh, 22 percent and if we consider stillbirth, uh, decrease uh, 23%. But it's uh, 2014, maybe uh, today, if we have uh, an update about this case, maybe increase again. I, I, know, I know this paper, and I, I will not to discuss this now, but I think it was not, uh, I discussed this, with people of the epidemiology of Osvaldo Cruz Foundation. And there were some bias in the- in I agree the, with you. The bias it, is the country from the Northeast uh, doesn't yeah. include in this. If you, if you go to the, to, the, to, the, to our statistics, official statistics, and you compare born alive with my alumin in Gossel 15 years ago. And now we'll find more or less the same incidence. Thank you. Thank you. I might just add one little thing. And I think one of the key elements to keep fortification working in the long run is to have a surveillance entity that looks that all the industrials keep on fortifying the way they should because we know as a matter of fact that you know all industrials are cheap and they will stop fortifying. There has to be a surveillance entity within the government that measures and maintains the inadequate fortification of folate in flour, in milk, in rice, uh, and corn, and wheat. I agree with you. Okay. Professor Helio, please. I'm Shell. Nice to see you. Nice to have you here. Uh, well, this, uh, this is true. Uh, some uh, 20 years ago, uh, um, following that uh, addition of uh, uh, vitamins in, in other uh, uh, food, and uh, uh, for instance, even uh, iodine in salt, we tried, you know, our region is a region where you may have, you have, you do have the, the big plants for sugar cane and uh, uh, alcohol, ethanol for cars. So I try to convince the, the industrials to add uh, folic acid to sugar. 
And uh, first they, you know, sugar is, is so common, everybody takes sugar. And it's as, as that uh, similar to salt, as different for, from uh, uh, adding uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to bread or something more, uh, not uh, uh, everybody takes it. So uh, uh, at first uh, the, the industrials accepted it, the idea, but then when they come with a, a, a big uh, consortium of, uh, of people, of industrials, they put so many things against that, that we decide not to do it uh, anymore. But I think uh, uh, addition of uh, 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 folic acid to, to simple things as uh, the idea was uh, sugar, it's not difficult to do. The, the main thing that they, they, they asked me is, uh, do you think that this could change the taste of sugar? If this changed the taste, uh, many uh, big firms like uh, Coca-Cola or, or the, the big, you know, Coca-Cola uh, buys uh, sugar in, in, in tremendous uh, amount of sugar directly from these uh, industrials. So uh, in the name of this, they decided not to implement this and that uh, would be a, a simple thing. And thank you, Michelle, for coming and uh, giving us such a big, such a beautiful lecture. Thank you. Miguel, I have a, a, a question. Can I, can I make it? Yes, of yes please. Perfect. Uh, we are uh, living, unfortunately, a pandemic. Does the pandemic uh, is a contraindication for prenatal uh, surgery? What do you think? I your I really recommendation don't because mm -hmm. no no we, we have had this uh, this discussion and we have decided if ever we had a case to propose the surgery and it do not happen uh, but uh, i have no argument to clearly answer to your question uh, i really don't know uh, that you know the problem we had uh, during the pandemic is that we have no um, respirator, we have no medication, we have no gloves, we have nothing. So this was the main problem. But uh, <clears throat> we, we have discussed of that and we have, we have decided if ever uh, we have a case to propose to do it. Uh, I don't know, Patricia or Nelsie, what, what happened <coughs> in Brazil. In, uh, have you done cases during the, the pandemic? Don't stop. It's continue doing during pandemic, yes. I don't know about uh, Patricia and Professor Sergio, but I think they, they continue also. Okay. So uh, we, we had one case in, in pandemic and uh, we talk with the mother about the risks of the, the surgery with the, the COVID. And uh, the mother, uh, it's uh, for the mother. Uh, she she preferred to to do the, the surgery. So we have, uh, in fact, two cases of uh, Mielo uh, operate in in uh, in uterus during the pandemic. Thank you so much by the by the answer. It's curious, but thanks so much. I think that it's very important to discuss with the parents about the risks and uh, uh, we can try. Thank you. I was imagining one case in which the mother get the coronavirus because the prenatal surgery could be a very bad ethic and legal problem. Yes. Thanks so much. Uh, Michel, uh, we have uh, some question about uh, hydrocephalus. So uh, maybe uh, I have an impression in Brazil, maybe we have five or six centers for uh, antenatal uh, surgery. And, uh, you know, Brazil, it's a continental country and it's not so rare uh, some patients that live in far from those centers uh, after when they need to be followed 
in, in some case, uh, the uh, other neurosurgeons will follow those patients. And it's not uh, rare uh, when we see a huge ventricular megaly after antenatal surgery that are followed by the by the, the, the neurosurgeon that did the, the, the antenatal correction and try to not to treat the hydrocephalus after uh, antenatal surgery. So uh, my question is, do you think that this number uh, is a little bit underestimated? The number of hydrocephalus after antenatal surgery it's one question, it's my question. And there are other questions about when, uh, when you, for instance, how is your tolerance about ventricle megaly and uh, uh, which treatment do you prefer, uh, HIV or shunt, if you decide to treat hydrocephalus? Okay, so underestimate, I'm sure yes, because uh, when you do something, uh, you don't like to have a failure and you try to wait probably a little bit longer. Uh, I'm sure uh, that it does exist in, in every place in the world. So th this is my, uh, my first answer. <clears throat> That's why uh, we try to uh, see these children in a multidisciplinary clinic with a lot of people and never alone to say to the parents, uh, you can wait, it will be okay. Uh, the se second question, uh, I think that the tolerance depends uh, probably on the country and on the department you are working. When you look to the postnatal myelomenagosel, in the States, and it was like that in the months, the ratio of uh, chance of treatment of the hydrocephalus is 90%. And uh, the, 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 the prenatal series, the ratio of uh, chance was 50, I would say 54 or 56%. And this is how they show that there is a difference. If we look to uh, our series in Necker, uh, which in postnatal myeloma cell, we put only 56% uh, of chance. Uh, we, we do a work with Dominic Thompson in London, and in London, it's 60%. And uh, if you look to all the series in the world in myeloma cell, it goes from I would say 40, 45 to 90% of chance for postnatal uh, myelomenago cell, which proves that uh, the, the tolerance depends if you operate uh, on the images, which means ventricular dilatation as in the States uh, in, in many centers, and there is a ventricular dilatation in 90% of the cases, or if you wait uh, to clinical deterioration, uh, which is uh, probably 50 or 60% of the cases. But for us in our antenatal series, we are for the moment at 20% of chance. <clears throat> and uh, the, uh, what was your, your last question? Is it, if you decided to treat, uh, uh, do you prefer- uh, for, for the moment, for the moment, we continue to put uh, chance, uh, but there is, as I showed some papers in the mm. literature, and right. uh, uh, if you look to what he's doing, for example, uh, Federico in Lyon, where they propose to do uh, ETV, but in my experience, it's not so easy to do an ETV in the myeloma cell as the first treatment of hydrocephalus. After that, for a dysfunction or disconnection or dysfunction you can propose. But I think it's an uh, open discussion. And uh, for, for me, the main problem for the moment is um, what is the place of coagulation of the choroid plexus? Because you know that uh, there is a trend specifically in the United States to increase the number of coagulation of the choroid plexus. 
there are two other questions in hydrocephalus. May I complete, Ricardo? Yes. From yes. from the audience, what your criteria to indicate VP shunt after myeloma meningocele? And uh, the same uh, question: If you have the frontal occipital horn ratio uh, plus uh, more than one point four, but without uh, macrocrania and without bulging fontanelle, did you consider to do uh, VP shunt or not? And the second question in the same is. If you have myeloma meningocele antenatal and hydrocephalus, did you treat intrauterus uh, myeloma meningocele both or nothing? Nelsi, I didn't answer the end of your question. If you have uh, a, fe uh, a fetal myeloma meningocele with hydrocephalus, did you consider to close myeloma meningocele intrauterus, treat also myelo uh, hydrocephalus at the same time, or you just don't do any of uh, these uh, fetal surgery for this patient? No, I, Is I... the question from Brahim Kamu Kamun. <laughs> No, I, I treat the myeloma cell and I consider to, I've never treated an hydrocephalus prenatally for a myeloma cell. Uh, I've treated hydrocephalus prenatally for all the reasons, but not for myeloma cell. And uh, I would say that the hope is that without uh, the disappearance of the Chiari, you have a stabilization or a regression of the hydrocephalus. So, I would say that never at the same time. And the first question was from Leopoldo Furtado. Your criteria to indicate uh, VP shunt in myeloma meningocele patients? The same that for any patients, which means that both the uh, progressive dilatation of the ventricle and uh, clinical signs. Okay. Ciao, we have a, Ricardo. Uh, Ricardo. May I ask you? Are you Ricardo. Um, Dr. Chamelas. Oh. Hola. Ricardo. Um, I am from Querétaro, Mexico. And my hospital is fetal, do fetal surgery. And my opinion in intrauterine surgery for myelomeningo cell is reality is in, in country by my by a multidisciplinary team. The articles that exist on fetoscopy surgery comment on the benefits on the mother, but no on the fetus. And my opinion, in my opinion, in uterine surgery is reality and fetoscopy by the future but but no the present. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Francisco. Thank you. Uh, Ricardo, can I can I say okay. something? I, I think that what is very important is that uh, the surgery remains in the hands <laughs> of the neurosurgeon, because uh, whatever happens, we will need to take care of the children for. 15 years uh, after, uh, 15 years, 20 years uh, after birth. And one of the risks, specifically with endoscopy, because we are not trained with endoscopic surgery, it's difficult for us to do endoscopic surgery, uh, is that uh, the surgery will be done by uh, non neurosurgeon, by general surgeon. And uh, this is a huge risk. And uh, just to tell you uh, a, a story uh, which happened to Jean-Marie Janik and me. We went uh, to a department uh, in Europe uh, where they are doing endoscopic surgery, just to, just to see uh, and uh, what we see. First of all, uh, the, the patients have never seen a neurosurgeon. Uh, she has seen 
uh, an obstetrician and a general surgeon. Second, uh, they decide to do uh, the uh, surgery uh, and uh, the surgery was technically perfect, but uh, they operate an LDM, which means that the skin is normal. They open the skin, they find out the stalk of the LDM and they turn around the stalk for one hour thinking it was the spinal cord. And this is uh, the risk uh, for our children, which means that we need to make the effort to be involved in the team, whatever uh, we are doing. Uh, I think that we can do open, we can do endoscopic, but we must do it by ourselves. We must stay in the team and we must learn uh, not to give the surgery to other Uh, surgeon than neurosurgeon, really. But it's only a matter of training, isn't it? If you have the ability to move your hands with a microscope, it's uh, already said that you can learn to, to use the instruments to do laparoscopy well. I mean, yeah, yes, but it's not so easy. And that's why we have a lab with ships and we train uh, on our ships to do the endoscopy. And we must work. Francisco, would you, would you say something? Yes, please. Thank you, Michel. <laughs> Michel, I would like to know uh, your advice to start this type of program because in our country, in Argentina, we perform that only in, bon in Buenos Aires because it's very difficult to us to start this type of program because there is not a lot of patients. I imagine not everybody performs this type of prenatal surgery, but the feeling the, that last paper is to say you have to do that to, uh, to do, to améliorer, say, to, to help this patient. So which is your advice to start to start this type of program in mm, not the biggest country, the smallest, smallest country? Uh, I think that uh, first of all, you need to cope, you need, if you can, access to animals and to sheep to rehearse the surgery. Second, uh, you need to collaborate with a trained uh, team. And what we have done at the beginning is that we went to uh, Sao Paulo and uh, Sergio will come us uh, very gently and we see some surgery in Sao Paulo. We, need to we went to Barcelona to see some surgery and so on and so on. Yes. But Just we to have a problem to, to <coughs> assurance. It's not the only to, to start the program for the for the doctors. The assurance uh -huh. is very difficult for us to start this type of surgery because uh, it's uh, two cesareans, two surgery. It's not very easy to us to, to start this type of surgery. Uh, the, 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 if you want to discuss, the, the only thing you can, uh, if you want to discuss with your administration, you, you just, we know exactly Uh, the mm -hmm. price of uh, a myelomenagocell. And the only, it's a me medical economic evaluation. We know that <clears throat> um, a myelomenagocell cost, uh, when, it, when it is operated after birth, about 150,000 euros a year. Uh, I, I, the hope is that If he's operated before birth, it will cost less uh, than that because less chance, less, less uh, caregivers, less something and something. So, uh, medico economically, I think that uh, it's, it's worth uh, what it is. But uh, apart from that, I don't know how you can convince your politician. But I think that even in a medical economic point of view, it's worth the price. Uh, Griselda, Griselda, would you like to say something? Um, 
Yes, I'll comment on it. Uh, Dr. Sara, uh, congratulations for a nice presentation. I only comment uh, the International Federation of uh, Spina Bifida and Hydrocephalus. Uh, the fortification with acid folic is the first recommendation in development countries, uh, really, really poor countries, um, and because they have uh, low access to the best health care. I had good impacts in reducing the cases of spinal biosrefums uh, and cost. Uh, but in Latin America countries uh, like El Salvador, Nicaragua, and Guatemala have many, many cases of uh, spinal biosrefums. And the access for indigenous people to the health systems is really critical. And um, the uh, the presentation about the um, uh, in uterus um, surgery for this patient not is available in these countries and it's really um, uh, difficult for the health system. Maybe for these countries, Griselda, we need to talk with the government and the Minister of the Health and try to fortify the food and try to improve, uh, decrease the incidence. Maybe in this field, we can help them, like us, Latin American society. Yeah. And we the World Federation. Yeah, uh, we have other uh, Clearly. panelists. Dr. Najla, Dr. Vinicio. The government Vinicio, would you like to okay. say something? Yes, please. Uh, Michelle, thank you very much. Good to hear you again. You always fantastic lectures. And I was uh, enjoyed, especially the way you addressed the emotional, uh, religious, and ethical problems of the family with a spectral child with a neural tube defect. I think they, they think that like a, a plague of, of biblical proportion. And I would like to ask you, how do you advise the mother about the second pregnancy after the antenatal surgery? Uh, in, um, in case of termination of pregnancy or in case of prenatal surgery? No, no. After, after the, the surgery, doing the antenatal surgery and then have a, a second pregnancy afterwards. We, we, we advise them as uh, any patient we have that means that uh, we told them that uh, the, the supplementation of folic acid is mandatory, uh, that uh, they need to wait if uh, they can for two or three years before, uh, because of the fragility of the uterus, uh, if you do open uh, surgery. <coughs> uh, we propose to do uh, ultrasonography by um, uh, reference centers, uh, just to be sure that th there is not uh, a new malformation. And we tell them that uh, the risk is uh, higher, but uh, the, the, the risk of the general population is from, in France is one for uh, 1,000 uh, pregnancy. And in, in case of one child with the, the, with the myeloma nervous cell, it slow it dropped down to one uh, for fifty or to one for one hundred, <clears throat> which means that we said that it's okay for the pregnancy, and now we have had three pregnancies after the initial surgery, and for the moment nothing. I don't know in the months if there has been. Uh, 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 new pregnancy with the myelomenado cell, and I don't know <laughs> if in Sergio, you have had a second child with the myelomenado cell. <coughs> and Michelle, the second uh, delivery should be a C-section or a vaginal delivery? Yes, no, 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 cesarean section. <clears throat> Dr. Suadi, Tatiana, would like to say something, please? Yeah. 
Yes, Michelle, thank you for your presentation. Nice to see you. Uh, I have two questions. Um, one is if you uh, contraindicate cases of uh, severe kyphosis, uh, limb deformities, or bigger or highest uh, level of myeloma cell to perform antenatal surgery. And my second question is, uh, during my time in the care, I saw some antenatal consultations. And uh, I would like to hear from you how you advise the mothers, uh, because everybody wants to be free from all comorbidities that we have in myelomeningo cell. Though, so they have, they want to be free from shunts, from uh, neurogenic bladder, and from uh, deformities and uh, 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 walk <clears throat> disability. How is your advice during consultation to these mothers? Okay, okay. Uh, for the uh, spine malformation. Um, when you have a huge, uh, a very huge kyphosis, for the moment we consider that it is a contraindication because uh, the the closure of the skin is uh, very difficult, and and <clears throat> so for us a huge uh, kyphosis is a contraindication. Uh, we have a diastematum myelia is not a contraindication. You know that there are some cases where you have. Uh, uh, a myelomenago cell in one side and the diastematum myela and the normal spinal cord. We, we have one case like that. <clears throat> so what we have done is that we have operated the side uh, on the uh, uh, on the myelomenago cell. Don't touch on the uh, diastematum myelia and operate the diastematum myelia at six months after birth. Uh, we have had uh, no other um, spinal deformity, but so I think that the huge kyphosis is for me a contraindication, but uh, again, it's open to uh, discussion. Uh, for the advice to the parents, <clears throat> in fact, what I say is that, uh, first of all, I explain what is a myelomenagose, which means it depends on the discuss the level, and I explain if it's N streets like that, L4, L5, L5, that there is always sphincter problem. Uh, some in most cases difficulty to walk, and uh, mental problem specifically if there is hydrocephalus, if we need to put a shunt, or if there is cerebral malformation. And uh, the first step is that the family must decide if they want to continue the pregnancy or if they want to terminate the pregnancy. Uh, and uh, this is the first step. And only if they want to continue, uh, I discuss what is uh, the surgery after birth and the results of the surgery after birth and what is the possibility of antenatal surgery which means that there is no three possibility, there is two possibility. And if you choose not to terminate the pregnancy, at this moment, we discuss uh, uh, between the antenatal and the postnatal surgery. <clears throat> and I think this is, this is very important. Dr. Dr. Swad, would you like to say something? Uh, yes. Bonsoir, Michel. Merci. Uh, hello, everybody. Bonsoir. <laughs> uh, it is just to, to give a comment about uh, um, open surgery, antenatal surgery. As you ask uh, some friends from different countries, in my country, we didn't deal with this uh, type of surgery. We don't, we don't have any center uh, who is dealing now with antenatal surgery. And um, do you think, Michel, uh, one of our friends said that, uh, I think it's in Mexico, that the problem is also with obstetricians and anesthesiologists. And do you think that the results that are published can be re reproducible in uh, every country? Uh, do you think there, there are not some limits 
Uh, as uh, know, uh, Nelsi, we are now in the era of global neurosurgery. And in my opinion, really, I, I don't think that we can uh, propose all these new techniques and all these things uh, uh, routinely in every country. What do you think about that? It, it's not routinely. I think that if in uh, any country, one team want to be involved in, in this kind of surgery, uh, it's possible, but it's a huge effort. Uh, you've seen uh, our experience. Huh? We, we operate less than 15% uh, of the cases we see in our clinics, which means it's a lot of time because it's really time consuming because the, the preclinical clinic is one day. Uh, and you can imagine, you, you, you remember what I said, I spent 20% of my time in my, uh, my prenatal clinic. You need to build a team, and the team needs means the uh, radiologist, and you need to have very, very, very good radiologist. Uh, you need to have a, a fantastic uh, anesthesiologist because the importance of the anesthesiology is uh, tremendous. And as I said, after, during, uh, sorry, before, during, and after the surgery. The, the post-op care is very, very, very important to avoid the uh, membrane rupture and to avoid the premature delivery. Uh, you need to have uh, two uh, or three, no and at least two neurosurgeons uh, skilled uh, to do this surgery. So it's a huge effort. Uh, that means that uh, if you want to build a team, you can build a team. Uh, and after that, uh, the, the other problem is that all your colleagues need to send you uh, the, their patients because you can't have, you can't have uh, 10 teams in one country, whatever is the country. Just a comment. So because uh... te technic technically, it's not so difficult to do this surgery. Uh, it's microsurgery. You, you need to, to learn to do that. But the problem, as usual in, in surgery, the problem is not the surgery. The problem is uh, what is around the surgery. And uh, you need to have the nurses. You need to have the anesthesiologist. You need to have the radiologist, and so on. <clears throat> Thank you. And maybe just to add, so add, if you don't yeah. have uh, neonatal care very, very good, uh, it's difficult to, to offer prenatal surgery. We was in Dakar with the ISPN course, and there we learned that they operate <coughs> myeloma negocial patients only after three months after the scar are already epitalized because they don't have uh, pediatric neurosurgical care and the anesthesiologist uh, are don't able to deal with and the neurosurgeon also uh, is a different world is is really uh, it's not a policy for everyone like Griselda uh, are talking about some countries in Latin America but the opposite we have four or five centers in the same city like in Sao Paulo here uh, we need to connect uh, is not doing until now the centers that are doing my own fetal surgery here and the neurosurgeon living in other departments is a continental country and the neurosurgery the neurosurgeon time to time receive the myeloma negocial patients uh, operate already and they will care for the children all of his life without knowing the background uh, what happened during uh, fetal surgery it is really a different reality yeah uh, may i ask also something about fortification because um, in, also in my country, it's, it's difficult because uh, we are quite like, we, we think quite like France, you know? And, uh, but what we are doing now, we are um, emphasizing uh, on supplementation, but that means that we need to make programmation of birth. And this is, 
difficult as uh, in many, many countries, but this is the only option that we have now. So we are working for a supplementation before gestation, but we can talk about till now about fortification. I think now is 1 a.m. to Professor Michel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't, don't worry, don't worry he, he looks tired. No, no, Maybe no, I'm not tired one, at all. More three or four hours here. Yeah. No, no, I'm not tired. I, I just, I just need <laughs> my whiskey now, but I'm not tired. Don't okay. Yeah. Ricardo, now is 8 more, but, We are yeah, I think two hours and a half uh, online. He, yeah, Ricardo from Brazil. If you have do, if you have, if you would like to say something, I don't know if it's online. Ricardo Gap from Brasilia, or maybe you can. Uh, Barbara, I think that you can uh, close. Dr. You can Dr. finish. Dr. Hamilton, want to say oh, something? Dr. Hamilton, you are... no, it's okay. Eight thirty, time to uh, dinner. Okay. <laughs> so, Professor, thank you I very, just, very, very much. It's two thousand, two hours. Uh, Michelle. Your yes, I just please. want to thank you to, to spend these two hours with me. I was very glad uh, to to be with you. It's not the same thing that to be uh, together in, in contact, but this this was uh, great. And this is a, a very good uh, uh, idea to set up uh, this presentation. And uh, I will try to come back during the week and maybe tomorrow with Federico, because I'm sure that tomorrow it will be, again, a great uh, uh, great lectures. So thank you to all of you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank Thank you. Vocês vão quebrar esse DN assim, não vou pagar de parar de pagar isso. Obrigado. Obrigada, Borba. Obrigada, obrigado, Ricardo. Valeu. 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 Tchau, tchau. Tati. Tchau, tchau. tchau, tchau. Adrian, tchau. Patrícia. Tchau. Valeu. Muito obrigado, Brasil. Tchau. Michel. Tchau, tchau. Francisco. Tchau. 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 Michel. Ciao. A bientôt. A bientôt. A bientôt, mon cher. Je vous embrasse tous. Merci beaucoup. A bientôt.